Hello, welcome back to Comic Flip. Today it is New Comic Book Day. It is Wednesday, June 12th, 2019. And I'm going to show you my polls from this week's haul. But before I do that, I just want to give a warm welcome to all the new subscribers that we've had join us. Welcome to the Comic Flip fam. So without further ado, let's jump into the books. So I like to start off with the indies. So up first we have Ride Burning Desire number one. This is from Image Comics. This is written by Doug Wagner, illustrated by Adam Hughes. The synopsis is, an ex-cop turned convict is released from prison after a 15-year sentence and now works as a bouncer in an exotic nightclub. I wasn't going to pick this one up at first, but the cover really spoke to me. I'm a fan of unicorns and onesies, so I had to get it. Up next, we have Sonata from Image Comics. This is issue one. This is written by David Hine and illustrated by Jared Van Dyke. The synopsis is, two races clash over a world they each believe to be their promised land, while a young woman seeks to wake the gods of legend that are believed to inhabit the planet. So I got cover B, which is done by this guy named Brian Haberlin, or Haberlin. Cover A is this yellow cover that I wasn't really a fan of. The story looks very interesting, and I'm very interested in the character design. It looks like they're flying griffins, but it looks like dinosaur griffins or something. Excited to give that one a read. Next up from Dark Horse, we have Umbrella Academy, Hotel Oblivion number 7. This is written by Jared Way from My Chemical Romance and illustrated by Gabriel Ba. Since the Netflix series came out, anything Umbrella Academy sells really well. So if you're interested in flipping, I highly suggest you pick up this book. However, if you're interested in the Umbrella Academy, I also suggest you pick up this book. Also from Image, we have Unnatural number 10, which is a series I've been following since issue 1. Created by Mirka Andolfo, who is from Italy. She's super nice. If you ever get a chance to meet her at a convention, definitely take advantage of it. Moving on to DC, we have Detective Comics number 1005. This is the Arkham Knight storyline concluding. Unfortunately, I did not get the super awesome variant cover done by... I'm going to screw up his name... Stejpan Sejic, I'm so sorry if anyone knows how to pronounce his name. It might be Steven Sejic, but that's there's a weird J in his name. Let me know how to pronounce that. <laughs> I also picked up Batman Who Laughs number 6. This originally was supposed to be the last of the series, but they extended it to number 7. I got both covers. I got the Jock cover, because Jock makes amazing covers. And I also got the Jenny Friesen cover, who I love her work. The white mark you see on the cover, that's just on the bag, by the way, that's not actually on the comic. But I've been enjoying the Batman Who Laughs, so I'm going to follow it all the way through. The next issue is the last issue, so make sure you pick it up if you've been following along. Another book that was not originally on my plan or list to pick up was Catwoman number 12. The cover just blew me away. Of course, it's an art germ cover. It's actually a callback to Batman number 42, which was released in 1957. In addition to being a sick cover, it also contains the first cameo appearance of Raina Creel's deceased son. So if you're interested in Catwoman, I would suggest picking that up because you always want to get those first appearances. Moving on to Marvel, the first book I got from them was The Immortal Hulk number 19. This is written by Al Ewing, illustrated by Alex Ross. I mean, look at that gorgeous, gorgeous Alex Ross cover. You have Abomination or the new Abomination on the cover, so this is a good one to get because you have a cover appearance. There is also a variant cover featuring Spider-Man um, in his armor suit. I didn't really like it. It didn't look that appealing to me, but if you're interested, it's out there. You should be reading Immortal Hulk. It has outsold Batman and is part of the reason why Tom King is getting kicked off Batman. So it's definitely a good read. I highly suggest Immortal Hulk if you're just jumping into comic books. It's a really good one to start off with, in my opinion. I also picked up Spider-Man Life Story 4, which takes place in the 90s. This is written by Chip Zdarsky, who's been killing it on this and Daredevil. In the last issue, we were in the 80s, and it was a retelling of Secret Wars. I'm interested to see where Chip is going to take us in this issue. Out of all the Spider-Man runs, this is probably my favorite Spidey one at the moment. I can never pass up a good superior Spider-Man. The writing is consistent in every issue, and it's never a bore to follow along. You're invested in the characters. It's a new story. This is a War of the Realms tie-in. We're still in that event. In this issue, apparently Doc Ock fights Frost Giants, 
and also assembles the West Coast Avengers, so they probably make an appearance in this. Moving on to my right, we have Symbiote Spider-Man number three, which is written by Peter David and Greg Land. Now, this is one you want to get because there is a one-page tie-in to the absolute carnage that Cates, Donny Cates, has been writing that's coming out, which is going to be the next event after War of the Realms, the event of the summer. So, there is a secret variant, which is the one you see here. You see on the title where it says Symbiote Spider-Man, you have the red blood splatter. It's supposed to symbolize carnage. Not every comic has that. I don't know the ratio, but you want to get that one because... They will sell for more money, and it's more rare. But Symbiote Spider-Man is really interesting because Peter David, which is a well-known writer, he wrote Smart Hulk. Professor Hulk explores untold stories set during the time when Peter Parker wore the black costume without knowing that it was the host symbiote before Venom. So it's a really interesting idea. So similarly, we have Venom number 15 on my left, which also contains a one-page tie-in to Absolute Carnage. And again, also has the secret variant, as you can see, the blood splatter on the title. This is the last issue being written by Colin Bunn. The next issue, Venom 16, Donny Cates is back on, and we're going to start the Absolute Carnage event. The two to pick up, definitely, if you can, are Venom 15 and Symbiote Spider-Man number 3, because they have the tie-ins to Absolute Carnage, and you want to get the secret variants. And here are my top cover picks for the week. We have Mortal Hulk number 19, the Alex Ross cover featuring the new Abomination, Sonata number 1, the variant with that creepy character on the cover, and the Griffin, and then of course you have Catwoman number 12. This is the variant cover done by Archer. So that's it guys, those are my picks for New Comic Book Day, Wednesday, June 12th. I hope you enjoyed this haul video. If you did, please leave a like, please leave a comment. If it's your first time here, Feel free to subscribe. We'd love to welcome you into the comic book fam, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.